This chapter has us dive headfirst right into the BB corn arc and really kind of lay the groundwork for it by showing us this plant hell. And oh man. Toriko Gourmet number 56. Storm into plant hell. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim here to bring you another review on the appetite inducing, muscle bound tale of Toriko. Our last chapter, of course, saw us really starting into a, uh, a new arc over here and really um, kind of laying the groundwork for uh, having to kind of go on, on almost the outer reaches of the actual regular world. We saw the gourmet world on the outside, but we did realize that, uh, or did find out that uh, that this uh, legendary BB corn, uh, which is in the Wu jungle, uh, might be something that would actually suit Terry's tastes, because uh, after all, they explained that he hasn't really eaten much in the last several months since, of course, the uh, Regal Mammoth arc. So, uh, that's where we left off. We wind up picking up, and uh, Toriko and Terry are, are in this this helicopter, and they're flying, you know, flying along. We presume to the Wu jungle, and Toriko is bitching and complaining. He's like, "I know we had to avoid that nest of giant birds and stop and refuel six times, but I can't believe that it still took us three days to get to this continent in a mock helicopter, right?" <laughs> and the pilot's like. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Toriko, um, we weren't actually refueling. We had to get more food for you. And he's like, whatever, whatever. <laughs> so, so it wound up taking them much longer. They had to keep stopping, not to refuel, but to refuel on food for him, you know. Uh, so we wind up finding out a little bit more about this, uh, you know, that this continent that it's on, this wool continent that uh, that the Wu jungle is is actually in. And I guess the continent itself is the third largest in the world, uh, 12 million square kilometers. Uh, absolutely huge. And as I look closer at the map, um, you know, it, it kind of, and they actually go and it says too, it says down uh, in one of the, uh, one of the sidebar things, you know, something about, um, you know, Eurasia being another one. And I was thinking about that and I'm like, Europe and Asia, Eurasia, that's, I, I don't know if this is supposed to be like a primitive version of our world or like an advanced version of our world. I mean, I don't know because obviously with the gourmet world thing, it's much, much bigger, but I see some similarities anyway between some of the continents. So um, just the way that they're shaped. And then of course that Eurasia thing uh, kind of piqued my interest a bit, but <laughs> anyway, they wind up going and, uh, and it kind of, they go, they, they land, um, you know, they get there, they land. And uh, the pilot tells him, he says, listen, you know, at the Wu jungle is still about 80 kilometers, you know, Northwest of here, but this is the closest I can get with it still being safe. Um, you know, good luck to you. <laughs> Tori goes like, Oh yeah, don't worry about it. Tom hired you. I'll see you later. <laughs> you know? So him and Terry get off and Terry immediately starts pissing all over the place, marking his spot, you know, marking his territory. And he's like, you're not going to have, this is a big open area. We know where it is. You're not going to have to do that. And he winds up finding, uh, Toriko goes and finds uh, some, he sees that there's peaceful flowers growing here. And they give us a description and a background of the peaceful flowers, but the narrator's off today. I'm recording this on a Sunday. Um, you know, and so he, he gets the day off. And uh, But the peaceful flower, in essence, is uh, about where it grows and everything else. I, I couldn't tell you exactly. I know that uh, something about the grinning manatees, it winds up being in the, the near, it grows near them or grinning manatees or something like them as well. But the bottom line of this peaceful flower is, is that it wilts whenever there's something dangerous around. And it has these six petals on it. And each petal uh, will wilt off. Uh, for an approximate 10, each petal re, uh, represents 10 approximate capture levels. So if you get near a beast and three of them wilt off, it's approximately a, a capture level 30 beasts, you know. So it's kind of a neat little flower and, um, and kind of a neat way of being, hey, Toriko actually picks some of them and goes and says, you know, some of these will come in handy. I'll take them with, uh, take them with me. Terry starts pissing on some <laughs> He's like, what do those flowers ever do to you? <laughs> anyway, on their journey as they're walking towards the Wu jungle, uh, they wind up coming across some some cool things, some sake coconuts. Uh, Terry jumps and, and gets a bunch of them out of the tree for them, and they talk about how there are these you know, alcohol-flavored coconuts, basically, like sake, like the the, the rice wine instead of <laughs> instead of actual coconut water in there. And Terry goes like, I'm getting a little buzz. Man, the proof must be good on these. Then he goes and he sees some idamami plants. And <laughs> And these things are actually like these soybeans, and they're uh, they're a take on edamame. Uh, anybody who knows anything about cooking would has heard of, of edamame. Um, anyway, <laughs> so I just thought that was funny. But these ones actually look like little eyeballs. So even though they're not eyeballs, they're kind of disturbing looking to eat for most people. So, 
So Toriko, as usual, is interested in, uh, his character itself doesn't have a lot of depth to it. You know, it's pretty much just, you know, muscles and eating and stuff like that. It's really the background characters, the supporting cast, that kind of, uh, you know, has become a lot more fleshed out and everything. So <laughs> Toriko is pretty straightforward. So they wind up going and uh, on their way as well to there. They see this giant strawberry. Terry goes to uh, kind of jump and go to get it. And as he does, Toriko goes and sees. This is basically showing how this, this peaceful flower works as we see some of the, the petals, or one of the petals wilts off. And uh, and Toriko goes and he's, no, no, don't go in there. And right as Terry goes and is able to, you know, he's trying to get to the strawberry, the strawberry is actually just, actually just like this hanging thing on this giant creature that was, you know, buried underneath the uh, the ground. Kind of comes up and Terry's able to get away from it quickly. And Toriko says, don't worry worry about it it's not you know it's like a capture level six or something like that the point was is really just to showcase the peaceful flower and how it works is, is what that whole thing was for so so then they go and they wind up getting into a little bit presume it's later on of course they've covered 80 kilometers and it's you know they're getting into the Wu jungle and Toriko talks about the canopy of the jungle and this is something that I remember my father telling me about from uh, he, he was on uh, two tours in Vietnam and he would talk about this triple canopy jungle and he's like it could be the broad daylight bright shiny sun out but the the triple canopy jungle was so thick it looked like it was the dead of night so that's kind of what I presume that this is similar to because he's talking about the canopy being th so thick and it being very dark in there and but you know this is plant hell of course so as they're walking around they see all these different you know just <laughs> creatures getting eaten up and everything and and then you know and, and Toriko says he says the one place where um you know the plants can go toe to toe with any other creatures that are out there so very cool stuff and just kind of the uh, just getting us into the meat and potatoes of this whole this whole journey I believe so um and then it winds up being Toriko is going and he's walking around and he tells Ter Terry as they're getting in there he says listen man this is like every man for himself here uh you can't be worrying about stopping to try to save me and everything else there's no time for bravery or heroics in here you got to watch your own back you know and terry is trying to talk to the wolf and and, and presuming that the wolf understands him, I guess, right? So they get into there, though, and then all of a sudden, uh, Toriko goes and he gets pooped on by this. He's just some bird shit comes and flies on him, lands on his shoulder, and he's like, what the? You know, and he looks at it, and Terry starts just barking, kind of going crazy, you know, growling. And all of a sudden, Toriko goes and looks over, and this plant sprouts from his freaking arm, and I mean, like, immediately. And he talks about how a lot of these plants from this plant hell must have come over from seeds and spores that have blown over um, from that, that blew over from the gourmet world to, to our world, right? And like I said, I take it as the gourmet world is just kind of like this unexplored, uninhabited, you know, part of the world that you know the, the creatures and the plants and everything like that are just way beyond human capability of dealing with right now. So that's what I take from it anyway. But this thing winds up going and sprouting out of his arm and you know and, and Toriko's talking about he gives you this whole background about how plants can basically put down roots anywhere. You know, I mean they show it on buildings, you see vines grow up the side of walls. They can put their roots down in concrete, you know. I mean, you've seen roots break through out of concrete, I'm sure, and push up sidewalks and parts of driveways and things like that, parking lots. Uh, so they're very strong, obviously, and that's what they're showcasing and explaining here. But then Toriko goes and he has to go knife, and he's like, Whoosh! and he goes to cut the plant off, and he actually has to lop off a piece of his shoulder, and he's just like splurting blood everywhere, right? And he explains about how he had to actually lop off a piece of it because this thing actually dug roots into it just from that seed that landed that was in the bird crap, you know. So then he's telling Terry, dodge the bird crap at all costs and everything, you know. And he's squirting blood everywhere. And then all of a sudden, Terry senses something. And I think we actually see some of the petals wilt uh, on one of the flowers that Toriko's carrying. But I don't I don't think he noticed it because he was probably dealing with the squirting, you know, the, the piece of his shoulder that was missing. So Terry goes and he's, boom, he knocks him out of the way or whatever. And Toriko's like, what the hell, you know. Next thing you know, Terry says, Terry, why'd you do that? And you see Terry has gotten grasped by this, like, crazy, gnarled-looking tree, like something out of, like, an Alice in Wonderland or just, like, a nightmarish type thing. And this thing has got Terry, you know, and holding him up in the air and <laughs> presumes going to eat him, tear him apart, whatever. And Toriko's just like, I love the end of it, too, because Toriko goes and he's just like, whoa, that's one nasty, what does he say? Oh, yeah, you're a one nasty tree. <laughs> and you just see this thing, man. Oh, just disgusting. Anyway, that is how the uh, how the chapter leaves off over here. And certainly we're looking forward to diving into the next one here in the BB Corn arc. So I guess, uh, you know, my chapter question, though, for you is, brothers and sisters, uh, is is really what are your thoughts, I guess, um, so far, at least, on what we know about this plant hell, this Wu jungle. Uh, I personally thought they've done a nice job of describing, you know, just, just some of the things in here. And then, of course, I thought the peaceful flower was a nice little touch, too being able to kind of judge capture levels of some of these plants and creatures 
that you know maybe have not even been been seen before uh, by by Toriko or, or by by many 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 humans eyes I guess you know um, so I guess that's what my question is for your thoughts on the Wu jungle leave your answer in the comments down below feel free to hit the thumbs up the like button if you should think that I deserve it and subscribe if you haven't done so already we will look forward to catching all of you in the next one nation do you like jungles so does this fella. Go on over to my Facebook and Instagram page and take a look.